Hello everybody and welcome back. We're playing some standard as the usual lately. Now, there was a post recently on the MTGA Reddit where a group of people were just moaning and complaining about mono green being by far the worst color. It had its time and standard. Mono red is better. Mono blue is better. Mono white soldiers. Mono white mid. And they were just complaining about every color and saying that green is just hev heavily outclassed. So I play tested around with a couple variations of mono green and I landed on this kind of modification themed and I'm missing a few core good green cards to really make it or to make a different variation of this deck. So there's a, definitely a good mono green deck with a bunch of copies of Defiler of Vigor. I just don't want to spend all my wild cards on a mono green deck that I don't love. And mono green isn't something that I love. I'm a Boros player mainly, uh, whether it be aggro or like a Mardu control, like that's primarily where I'm at. So not going to spend too many wild cards here. So playing with what I have, uh, I was inspired to make this variation of the deck when I just happened to unlock in a pack my fourth copy of Clay Champion. He's always good, potentially or arguably better in Selesnya, but in mono green, he's always an 8-8 for four, no matter what. So that's that's good. Actually, not no matter what. Sometimes he's bigger. You know, sometimes he's a 9-9. Or sorry, sometimes he's he's a 12-12 for 6. You know, you just you could pump mana into him if it's all green. We're playing nothing but force. So that's pretty cool. Then the deck kind of ended up being really heavily built around Iron Apprentice. It's not like it's built around him, but it's one of the best synergies we have is a ton of stuff grows him. Uh, the Timberland Guide, the Jagan Defense, the Temple, the Sim and Simulacrum. And then when he dies, he moves all his counters onto another creature. I think we could do with a little bit more high end, like if we had more copies of Workchop, <laughs> Workchop, Chief, and Silverback Elder, I'd probably play them. These two Bailoff, gaining four life when they come in matters a lot. Uh, I've been just out aggro to buy a little bit by a few decks, but overall this deck, it survives early and then it, it starts growing your things and all of a sudden you have a bunch of modified creatures and it, it does some pretty cool things. So I haven't playtested it as much as I'd like to playtest some of my decks before I go into Mythic with them, but I did playtest a good, uh, like a healthy amount of games in, in normal. So let's uh, let's take it into ranked as soon as we get some nice fancy lands in here. These are my go-to force, but I think I'll switch them up. Ah, uh, the Kamigawa ones. These are wonderful. Speaking of beautiful forests, I own like three premium lands, and I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like that's a good amount. I don't. I I'm not too tempted to buy more. But today in the shop, there are some nice lands, and like that's a that's a serious thing. It's like premium lands, but I can't buy them all. Like there's too many, right? There's two of each color. So should I splurge and get just one? I think white's the color I play the most of, if not maybe red. And this is a nice island or a nice plains. No, 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 no. I'm gonna save my coins for draft. That's that's where I'm at. So let's get into some ranked games, see how she does. If I was to make a best of three variation or a sideboard for this deck, I'd bring in some Tamiyo Safekeepings as four of. I have two in the main board, but a couple in the sideboard for when you're against Mono Red. They go to burn your creature, you save it and gain two life. That's a good tempo swing when it, when it really matters. I like that Tamiyo safekeeping is permanent. You could hit your enchantments and stuff with it. And it gives it hexproof too, so it saves it from exile. So, for some reason it seems like this deck matches with Mono Red more than anything else. In the playtest, I had like four games in a row against it. And that's kind of why I ended up bringing in those Baylos, because life gain is just so important against Red. Now, if I start gaining life right now with the Gallag Readers, typically Gallag Readers wants to make treasure tokens first and then start gaining life later, but not this time. 
play against Mono Red where he did four damage on turn two. I'm sitting on 16 and he's gonna attack with a bunch more. I just start gaining life right away. It's good too. It incentivizes him to kill the tracker, not the greeters. And that matters because we want the greeters to live as long as possible. The longer he lives, the more life we will gain. Gain two life. The greeters is a horrible blocker, so we're going to attack with him again. Now we got a safe keepings up. There's the blowout. Got him, boys. <laughs> Counter his spell, and I gain two life for one mana. Oh yeah, and then he gets, he says, I've had enough of this greeter. The greeter traded one card for one card, and gained me four life. Let's say it's a net win. Fire Bridge Tracker also good in the matchup. An attack with Vidge. Block again. We really want to hit a land now. We got two Warp Shop. War Chiefs in our hand, so potential six life there. An opponent main boarding scrap work mutt. Great draft card, but I don't know about constructed mono red. Hmm. Neither one of them are, are modified, so we don't care about dropping the Kadamba pre combat. Let's get in. Let's see what he does. He chumps with the mutt because he wants to unearth it. Fair enough. Let's dig. We want to hit a land. Ah, uh, whiff. May as well commit to finding the land. And whiff again. Uh, it'll happen, I guess. A little scary now. We have a mitt full of cards, but it's going to take us a while to play them. Okay, we're down to seven. There's a land. Good. We're up to ten. I I could see opponent scooping it up right here. Should have lethal next turn. Mono greed modifications. Cool, cool, cool. We're here to farm mono red. Since everyone's going to be playing it at the end of the month. If I hit a land, I could blitz the work chief. Work chief? I, I don't know why. Workshop war chief is the hardest thing to say ever. Let's just attack with both. Hmm. Yeah, she trades to two for one. It's good for us. One goes to one. And we gain another three life. It's good, that's game. Let's count the life up we gained so far. We gained just four off Gallag Readers, and then six here. So we, we gained ten life. Maybe you should have put it on this guy, I know. Oh, shoot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost killed myself. Almost killed myself blocking wrong. Well, that was dangerously close. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, I was so confident that we had it. And the thundering ride you off the top put us to one health. But yeah, hey, gain 10 life. Ended it on one. GG. Northern, 94%. I think the game breaker last game that we just played was the uh, Tamiyo Safekeeping. The one mana blowout, save our creature. Your spell does nothing. You can't attack now because I have an indestructible creature. And gain two life. That's a lot of stuff for one mana. Good draw so far. We, uh, we're happy to see another forest. 
This deck is so good. I honestly hate playing against this more than Mono Red. Gallagreeters or Timberland Guide? Gallagreeters is better in all situations unless, unless, unless he has Brutal Cathar. If I play the Gallagreeters and he just does Cathar, then I'm like, oh, I should have played the Guide. Let's risk it. Okay. Main phase. Flash creature. Weird champ, bro. Now we're on 18. It's not like we're against Mono Red again, so... This time I will do the higher upside play. Which is to make a top treasure token. And... Pass the turn. And now if he has the Cathar... He probably wants to take the tracker, because that's what's holding him back from attacking. Okay, sweet. Should I just drop an 8-8 clay champion? Kind of runs into the same problem as the... You know, it, it, it just loses to Brutal Cathar. So does... So does the War Chief, but then at least if we get him back, he's not a 2 2. Let's just tap out, spend 5 mana for the War Chief. Make a treasure token or gain 2 life? Treasure. We love mana. Stack with our boy with Vidge. It's going to be a favorable trade. If he trades 3 creatures, that's cool. May as well trade with him now before he gets a whatever veteran. The one that's a lord gives him all plus one. So does he have his Cathar that we've been playing around? Kind of. He does. We'll see you later, War Chief. Yeah. Good pick, good pick. Now we'll play the Clay Champion. I'll just play it for 4. 8-8 eight, eight is big enough. We could make it an 11-11. Three more counters. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think it's time to start growing the Gallag Readers. And then let's play the Timberland Guide. Throw the Iron Apprentice. When he dies, he'll move his counters around. And we'll get in again with the Tracker. My opponent chumped last time, so likely he'll chump again. So that's good. Our board state's getting better per turn. And we're being very mana efficient. We have some mana to sink into the clues. Start drawing extra cards. Another Tracker in hand. We got some gas left in the tank. What do you have, opponent? Definitely some good cards in the Azorius Flyers deck. Urban's one of them. Everything's flying and in now. Ouch, there's going to be a lot of damage. He doesn't attack? He had 13 damage in the air. If he attacked all. Hmm. I'm worried about my life total. If he attacks with all next turn, it's 17 damage. So if he has the Lord, he has lethal. How do I play around that? It's gain some life, right? Do you think we're lit into? Then Briar Bridge. Grow the greeters. Then we gain two lives over at 24. And then everything's going to be flying, so we go like this. Uh, 
That's great. Opponent's playing funny. I don't know. He shouldn't be wasting his blockers. Blockers. Wasting his soldiers. I mean, he needs... He needs them to trigger the Harbin. And I don't see a win for him other than flying over my stuff. A opponent playing a tier 1 deck. Like, one of the best decks out there, but piloting it horribly. Indicative of maybe why he's 94%. There's the Myrel. Chips in for 3. Alright, let's draw. Hmm. Draw again, I guess. Could have a fight spell or an audacity. Something that gives trample. No. Alright. Timberland Guide. I think I'll make the tapped treasure just to grow the wormlet. We need a... We need an artifact to enter, enter the battlefield. It gains us a life too, so... We lose out on one life, but... Get a counter here. Just get in, right? One has one good block with the Myrel. But he has five creatures, so everything's going to fly next turn if he swings in. So we just do it like this. Get in. Count on opponent to make bad blocks since he's been making them bad all game long. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Myrel attacks. Ooh, nice. We can make a lot of soldiers now. Oh, man. Doesn't matter how bad opponent pilots his deck. His deck is just good. So we'll trade one for one. Myrel's gone. But we desperately need some trample. Man, do we just lose this game now? Him having all the chump blockers and then flying over? Like, just here, next turn, he has 21 damage in the air. Just in those these tokens. You guys really want to climb? This, guy, this is the deck you should be playing. Azorius Soldiers. Thing slaps, man. We don't have anything to gain enough life. Okay, let's start with the simulacrum. Some counters there, gain one life. We'll play this too. Just for four, make another 8-8. Eight, eight. Gain one more life. And we'll attack with the 5-5. Five, five. If it dies, it'll grow something. 4-4, four, four, the 8-8. Eight, eight. And the Briar Bridge can't attack as Thal use a 3-power first strike. I fully expect opponent to just kill me next turn, right? But I've expected that a couple turns in a row now. So maybe he's going to blow it again. Should have lethal in the air. Oh, he's got way lethal. Way lethal, man. Kill me! Put me out of my misery! Alright. Good job, opponent. You figured it out. Let's have a look in our, in our deck here. I hate getting chump blocked when I have massive 8-8s on board. Just... They felt useless. I want some more stuff to get past his shields. Little 1-1s. One okay, we only have one copy of Audacity. And then one copy of Kadama's uh, Kadama the West Tree. That's it for Trample. 
This doesn't give trample. He has base trample. I didn't hit any of those. One copy of safekeeping. Hmm. It's hard. We don't want to make cuts, but I I have to bring in some some sort of uh, trample stuff. Let's take out the two bailiffs. They never came up, but we need to bust down the shields. Take out those two for two audacities. Two more sources of trample for one mana. What else is there that's decent in here? I like Gaia's Gift. It acts as the removal spell. Or, sorry, a protection spell and gives trample. Potential game ender. What about Jewel Thief? Should I have any copies of those? Vidge Trample. It's a 3 3 that makes a token when it comes in. It's pretty good. Not amazing. Hmm. All right. What about Glorious Sunrise? That's a one of. Beginning of combat on your turn. Everything gains trample. Gets plus one and trample. Let's do that. Got one more cut. Don't want it to be anything up here. It's got to be a three drop or a one drop. The Iron Apprentice is synergized too good. Same with the Wormlets. Doesn't look like we have that much artifact stuff, but we do. We totally do, because the Gallic Readers all make artifacts every turn. So do the Briarbridge trackers. Well, just once for these guys. So, what are we going to cut? I feel like the safekeeping is too valuable as a one of. Just so strong. Maybe one of the Simulacrums? 23 lands, 2 bushwhacks. That should be good. That should be the right number. If I go down a bushwhack, and we're playing 23 lands and a bushwhack. No, that's not it. Can we take out one of these Timberland guides? We kind of suffer on the 2-drop slot a little bit now. Not have, don't have that many plays. But it could be okay because you could always play 2 1-drops instead of on turn 2. Or even just one. Alright, I like that more. In a sunrise and two audacities for trample. Let's try it like this. Dragon Master 85. Pretty bad hand. Hmm. Is this good enough, though? No, we want something more proactive than this. This is world's better, but we do have to count on our deck drawing a land, which it has not been doing for me lately. Let's put back the, the War Chief. It'll be a while before we get to play it. Doesn't even have to be a land. A land or a creature with two CMC or less. That's like half of our deck. And it is a land. Let's offer the trade. Opponent knows we don't have anything. Nice, bro. I'm good with that, honestly. That recruitment officer does work. And it's never 2-1 for very long. Let's make a treasure. Tempted to grow him, but let's make a treasure. Having him be a 3-3 is big enough. We 
we're not this aggressive, but we sure are acting like we are. And that might scare our opponent into playing defensively. That would be good for us. Imagine he doesn't attack with a Thalia now because he's playing defensive. Of the big brain plays. You don't have to leave Gallagher's black back to attack if he attacks and scares them into not attacking. Ah, all that talk for nothing. Now I just seem like a jackass. <laughs> That's okay. Dragon Master not falling for my shit. What could he be thinking about? He, maybe he's thinking Brutal Cathar on Gallard Greeters? Mm, or he's like, I don't know, should I wait for something higher, a higher upside to play? If he has Sky Strike Officer, that's what he should play, right? Like, Hundo P. 100% slam that. Passes the turn. We know he has something to do, right? Because he thought about it for so long. I play Briar Bridge Tracker. I'm kind of playing into a potential counterspell. If he has the make disappear, it hits it. But if he has the counterspell that cares about how many creatures you have, I have the treasure token to pay for it. So let's start with this. I don't want to just get aggressive on him. Let's gain life. Gain a life. That's fine. He could have the Flash Soldier. Makes two one ones. I think there's a good chance of that. So let's leave the Simulacrum back. Ajano. Didn't even consider that that was a possibility. Oh, we, we misplayed a lot. A lot, a lot. Playing around stuff he didn't have. I should start with Teething Wormlet, then cast the Tracker, get one trigger there. Then when the Tracker ETBs make the token, get another like a treasure token. Would have two artifacts come in after the Wormlet. Opponent did have the Resolute Reinforcements last turn. Just so happened that he was better off doing the Ajano. He must have another Thalia or he wouldn't uh, throw it away like that. See if we can't draw a combat trick or removal spell. No. I don't know what's up with the deck. Doesn't want to do the thing. Been drawing non-lands or lands like crazy. We're okay with the Simulacrum dying now. The trades with anything. Even a 1-1. But then we could recur it next turn. Grow the Wormlet. Gain a life. Put some counters on some things. Point decides to just take. Alright. We got the mana to pop our clue. We just drew a land. We're going to draw from the turn and from the clue. Shouldn't have three lands in a row. I feel like the card before that was a land too. I think it was. All right. Grow who? The Wormlet or the Tracker? I like the Tracker because of the Vig. And let's attack with all again. I 
The unearth gives haste, so we're in no rush to do that. We'll unearth next turn. Oh, it finally draws his Myrel. Lucky us. Wasn't too early. Okay. Some alacrum. Throw the wormlet. Let's throw all the eggs in the one basket here. Got a 7 5 trample. Wow. Cool. Do we have too many lands? I I got land screwed one game where I kept a three land hand and I drew no lands and <laughs> I drew absolutely no lands. I, I got it to like this part of the deck like 45, 44 cards left in it and just had three lands that I had in my opening hand and I was thinking what the heck do I have to cut some lands from this? And I, I cut that game out of the video because that was just trash. It's like a long game with no action. But now, all I could do is draw lands. I gotta turn on the untapped app so I know my percentage. <laughs> Audacity, what the hell, dude? Okay, let's open up on TGA untapped, companion, whatever. Untapped.gg, that's the one I use. Action, action card. Mm hmm. Where is your Messiah now? I know I say that often. That's one of my favorite things about Audacity is creatures exiled, we still draw. A land. This is unbelievable. Can you believe it? No. It's unbelievable. It says we still have a 30% chance to draw another land. We have 11 in here. 30% chance. Basically 1 in 3. That's cool. It doesn't happen. I'm not going to double spell. Moon Rage Brute flips and then... Sad. Oh, wait a second. Whoa. I could end the game. Blitz. Go, Warchief. Go. Go, Warchief. Go. So concerned about my lands. But I nearly didn't blitz out the war chief. One's gonna go down to one. Still not gonna cast the simulacrum. Oh man, oh man. No way opponent stabilizes on one. What a grindy game. Okay, 4-4 Apprentice when he dies. 
you'll move four counters onto something. I'm just going to pass the turn and then double spell again. Just destroy us with Brutal Cathar. So we've got two Bushwhacks for fight spells. We have a work Workshop War Chief. A Glorious Sunrise. And... One Audacity. Those are all the things that end the game right now. We don't draw either of those, but we do draw what's going to be an absolutely monstrous clay champion. I have no idea how big this thing's going to be. <laughs> cool, though. The 2020. The 2020 until Moon, Bra Mo Moon Rage Brute flips over and makes him a 2-2. I guess is a fine attack, right? He gets to eat one, then he has to trade with the other one. Whether he loses the Siege Veteran or the Harbin, we're happy. Those are two good creatures. He'll get a 1-1. One, one, but we'll get to move the counters from the Apprentice. And then cast the Simulacrum next turn from the Graveyard. Oh, creature get one, plus one, plus one. Oh, brutal, man. Read the cards. Read the cards. I failed to read the cards. Oh my god, he messed up. Look at this. <laughs> ah, oops. <gasps> that sucks, dude. He first striked the Iron Apprentice, so mid-combat before regular damage, the counters hopped onto the Simulacrum, killing the Siege Veteran. That's not a double spell, because Unearth isn't cast. There we go, we did it. Everything gets plus one in Trample. That was a ridiculous game, all things considered. Like, we should have won so long ago. And then all of a sudden the deck was like, no, you are going to draw seven lands in a row. And then one Audacity and then a few more lands. Like, what? <laughs> Let's have a quick peek. I don't think there's anything wrong with our land number. It felt good last time I was looking at it. Damn, that was a weird one. Yeah, 23 lands and 2 bushwhacks. It's basically a fight spell, but sometimes searches for land. It's fine. 23 is definitely not too many. It was just an unlucky series of events. Good game. The 2020 clay champion was pretty funny. I like that a lot. Oh, uh, okay. I guess we'll keep it. It's kind of slow. Mono red again. Hmm. Mono red with a good draw. Okay. We go Timberland Guide into Kama's Tree. At least it says Reach. It's the Prowess deck. Hello, Apprentice. A little bit late, my friend. Well, I think I just Kadama's of the West Tree and then attack. So if he had a one mana spell, he attacks there for sure, for sure, for sure. So let's let's bank on that. Let's play our 3 3 reach and attack. We get in and we get to fetch a land into play. That matters, because we are stabilizing. We need some Gala Greeters or anything that's going to gain us life. I'm not going to risk losing the West Tree. I'll take a bunch of damage instead. Okay. Wow. That hurt. Do I make a 8-8? Do I make a mana? I feel like making mana is good here. No, we gotta we gotta make them stop attacking us. Let's play an eight eight. 
and submit zero and pass. Now only the Phoenix Chicks will attack. Antagonize plus four plus three. I mean, the Westry still did something, right? He gave us a block. Put a land into play. And ate a card from their hand. No infantry attacks? Okay, that's good. Play champion doing his job. Holding him back. Play the war chief and pass. That he could have a something. I don't know if he removes the the war chief. Has to exile it because it makes a four four. Maybe I should attack there. But then he just attacks into both. And I only have one blocker. Block as much damage as I can, right? Yeah, definitely a good thing not to attack there. We need to draw life gain, man. Gala greeters. Another war chief, but doesn't really do it. Is it lethal with a trample? No, not quite four. One has got two damage in the air. Only needs to find two more. We have six mana. I guess we just go as wide as we can. Attack with eight. Let's go. Let's go wide first, and then consider the attack. If I attack with eight, he goes to ten. Then I still have four blockers, but the infantry has trample. Infantry has trample, so I could double block him with the Rhino and the Iron Apprentice and then chump the Felden. Hmm, good game. Mono red things, boys. Mono red things. I need a dub ski here. I need a little W. Quick win. Unsatisfied with the end of that one. That antagonize was a blowout play. Opponent, opponent was on the play as well. I feel like that's a huge thing with the mono red matchup. They're on the play, they have a huge advantage on us. We'll keep this one. Mono red again? Maybe. Could be Rakdos. This time, at least, we have our Iron Apprentice turn one instead of drawing him turn three. On the board. Alright, pet. Not gonna have you screech at me. Okay. Look at the bright side. Better him end festivities on the Iron Apprentice than the Gala Greeter. Oh, yes, the nuts! Yes, one mana removal spell for everything I play. Pretty good. Pretty good opponent. Opponent has another removal spell. He's holding priority. So I will not put the audacity on the Timberland guide. If you cast it and in response they remove it, you don't get the draw card. You only get it if it goes from the battlefield to the graveyard.
So we played around it. That's good. Mechanized Warfare. That hurts. Either a land or something to play. Okay. At least now we know that we're going to get to our five mana. Or we could have some burn spells in hand and just go face. But let's go for the highest upside. Have Silverback not be removed. And then when we cast the War Chief, we gain a ton of life. He's going face. He's going for it. He left it on top. Must be another burn spell. We're down to five. No way he has two burn spells in hand after casting four burn spells all game. No shot. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, well, that, uh, let, 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 let that be a lesson to the workshop war chief. That's where you got to go. As soon as you could play him, gain three life against mono red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven burn spells with a mechanized warfare in the top 13. Very impressive mono red player. Disappointed. Disappointed with that one for sure. I gained three life there. I still go to two. And then whatever he draws on the next turn is going to kill us, right? I really feel like Silverback was the right play on 10 life. 12, whatever we were at. Hot damn. Let's try it again. We get the play once again. Or sorry, the draw once again. Third time in a row. And the cut down. Okay. Am I triggered? I think so. Why, dude? What 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 are you doing? Scasco, please. Right on. Figures it out. Apprentice, Audacity, at the very least Audacity will cantrip and draw us a card. And an underdog, okay. So he could crew the bank buster to block, or he's gonna crew it to attack. All right, no good blocks there. So let's go for our highest upside. Let's get the Jigan down. And then we'll attack. If he trades, the counter will jump over and we'll draw a card. Next turn, both of these things will grow. One of the reasons you attack there with the Apprentice is Jigan defend the temples puts a counter on two things. So you don't want to block with the Apprentice. Good. Good, 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 good. We're gonna... We're gonna get him good next turn here. I'm gonna take some good damage though. Take 7 plus the 2 from the draw. Take 9. We're down to 7. Yeah, 7 life. But another good draw. So this is how we do it. Put the two counters there. Oh, hang on. Hmm, one mana short. Because we want to grow the apprentice so that we could make him fight the shielded. But it would be really nice to give him safekeeping so he doesn't die. But not necessary. First, we'll get in for six. Now that he's gotten in, target creature you control fights. You fight him. And then we'll put all the counters onto this simulacrum. And draw another non land. Some games we flood, some games we draw none. 
These games happen. Not worth getting worked up about. Hmm. Where's your messiah now, she? So he grew his sleeper. I think we'll block it. Go for throat, not hitting the simulacrum is pretty cool. I want to play the clay champion, but you know, I'm not. I'm gonna hold up the safekeeping. I think that's better. Let's play the eighth. I want to pay one and just modify, but I can't. I need to leave the man up for the safekeeping. Just pass the turn. So the, the Rising Star is a cool card. He gets plus five plus five if you control four more modified creatures. Damn. Damn, dude. Ah, I didn't play around Invoke Despair. We just got blown out. How does he know not to attack? The wise opponent. And we just cannot draw a single land. Like, not at all. It's crazy, man. Can't attack. Opponent has almost lethal on board, so if we do attack, we could just easily lose. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. Ah, one of your friends has to leave. Planeswalkers are the most annoying text in the game. The dialogue all the time. One of your friends has to leave. Where, bro? Where, where, where are these lands? What the heck is going on? We're going to play two Iron Apprentices and then drop the safekeeping. On their turn during combat. At least we have what it takes a triple spell. Opponent crews up. Indicative of a big double block. Alright. So we're going to save the clay champion here, right? Because it's bigger. Both of those are dead. Up to seven. Iron Apprentice, Iron Apprentice. Next turn, all we're gonna do is draw a land, right? Draw a land, unearth the ape, 
the ape attacks. He's a two power. He puts two counters on an our Brennus. We have a ton of pressure onto opponent's life total. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather forget. I'd rather forget I ever heard you say that. Dude, what are you doing? I draw a fight spell, we win. No lands or bushwax at all. 16 cards into our library. This is boring. Whatever. Sacrifices must be made. Figure it out, opponent. Just gonna take a quick little nap here, boys. I feel like I'm probably never gonna pilot this deck again. I love it, it's so cool, but it's just done me so dirty right now that I'm offended, you know? I'm kind of sensitive. How could you do this to me? Might sound like I'm victimizing myself now. I don't know. Who dare you, deck? Backs with both. All right, Skasko. Ladies and gentlemen, Skasko has figured it out. We're dead to so many things. He has to block the clay champion. Which means he can't double block the tracker. Even if he did, it's a two for one. It's bad for him. Oh. Tick tock, tick tock. What do you guys think he's thinking about? You know what? I'm just getting frustrated for nothing. I bet you he's doing his grocery list right now. He's thinking, oh, I got to get bread, milk. Oh, you know what? Hot dogs. I want to get hot dogs to chop them up and put them in my macaroni later. Yeah, that's going to be good. And you're going, mom, a meatloaf. Good job, opponent. Casting a spell. Alright. Sure opponent's almost done his turn. Seventeen cards in. Do we mull? Put a land on the bottom? Nope. I can't even remember how this game started. We had a bushwhack. We used it to fight. 
Mm. Yeah, that's right. We fought a shield, didn't we, at the start of the game? Oh, yeah, that was this game. And then he smoked us with Invoke Despair. Lily of the Veil. And he's just underdogs like crazy. He didn't draw any cards off his bank buster. He got aggressive with it. This is a pretty good mono black aggro deck. And we fucked him up, boys. Don't like to swear, but you know what? Feels good to let it out. GG. That's definitely going to be it for the video. Um, I think the deck ended up going... Four losses and three wins after I started recording. Uh, overall, I love the deck. It's really cool. It does great things. It didn't really get to show some of the best synergies. Once Dragon flips into the Remnant of the Rising Star, everything that ETBs, you pay however much you want to grow it. And that's a really cool thing. It's just we didn't get to ramp up and have a bunch of mana to pump into things on a stable board. We were always like fighting to survive and... Just holding up mana for the Tamiyo safe, keeping that one game. Uh, but yeah, the deck is cool, and it does do things. It just let us down a couple times there. Some silly, silly draws. Drawing, you know, seven lands in a row with an audacity in between. And then drawing no lands for like ten draws straight that last game. And then still winning, like... Whew. Some weird stuff, man. Some weird stuff happened. But definitely the champion of this deck is the clay champion. The hero himself. He came in. He was a 2020 at one point. Yes! I love that. Um, so that's going to be it, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, sorry if my attitude was getting a little shitty near the end there. I was kind of getting a little bit more than mildly frustrated. But I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.